us a glimpse of what the family life with Harper and Gideon and David is like? We, maybe to a weird fault, didn't want to have kids and then have other people raising them. So we, and I don't know why we opted for that, because the other seems so much better. <laughs> but, but I think I think maybe being a same-sex couple that you don't want to seem like you, they're, they're sort of token children. Like we really wanted to have kids and have a family, and we both come uh, come from middle middle uh, income families in, in regular-ish towns. So we didn't come from affluence, and we didn't um, we weren't struggling and fighting and so we wanted to kind of have that family life um so with the kids there's been a lot of sleepless nights and then through that we have nannies and they're great and so i'm not trying to imply that we do it all by ourselves at all but that's kind of what we hope for that the kids know that we're their parents and that he's daddy and i'm papa and that we have a life and that we wake them up and we put them to bed and if we aren't able to then we certainly explain why we're not just kind of transient parents to them so our days are you know groggily waking up at 6 50 begging them to let us sleep till seven <laughs> And then waking up around seven-ish and having breakfast with them and getting them to preschool now, uh, which starts around 8.30. We're trendy, so we call Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck buses. We call Uber. And then we Uber them to, <laughs> to preschool. And then we kind of work around the house or go to the gym or, you know, uh, work on stuff for the day. And they are done around 12.30. And they're in classes now. So Harper had swim class today. And Gideon's taking a fencing class, <laughs> which is so cute. <laughs> it's so cute. Uh, so that's fun. And, and that's, then we try to eat dinner around 5, 5.30-ish. Um, structure's good for them at this age at four, so then they read books. We read books, a lot of books with them. Always have been big book people, so they pick multiple books and we p read multiple books. And if I may recommend a book that I have no agenda on, B.J. Novak has a book called The Book, uh, the book With No Pictures. That's a new kid's book, and it's hilarious. Um, sometimes kids' books are overly simplistic, and the notion of this is that as you read the book with no pictures, you're forced to read all of the words as, as you turn the page. It's a little bit like um, there's a monster at the end of this book with Grover and, and, and being panicked about that. But so as the, the pages turn, he, you know, he keeps saying, oh no, please, I'm not gonna, oh I see, when, when you're forced to read a book, you have to, anything that the book says, the person reading it has to say, like, I am a robot monkey. And the kids think that's the funniest thing that they've ever heard. So, and it was a really smart idea, so that's a good book. Um, so we read books and then we uh, bathe them, usually in the, in the reverse order. And they go to bed around uh, 8, and they go to sleep around 11.45. <laughs> no, 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 no. They go to bed around 8.40ish. We're trying to figure, we're still trying to figure out the, the sleeping dynamic. Because they really want us to lay in bed with them while they go to sleep, which is great. and adorable and you get to be with them and, you know, hang out with them. But that feels like a security blanket that they need to not have. And I don't know at what age that's supposed to go away. So I'm very much of the like, it's bedtime, five minutes. I mean, for five minutes, we'll hang out for five minutes and you have to go to bed. And five minutes go by and I was like, I'm out. And I close the door. And if they're upset about that, they can be upset. I'll come in maybe 10 minutes later and say, hey, dude, it's bedtime. You have to go to sleep now. <laughs> and now they're into, but I'm not tired. <laughs> But I like them at four because I can rationalize. I, I think I can. No, they're not into sugar. And since David's a good chef, uh, they, they don't eat a lot of weirdly processed foods and, and things. So he makes them farmer's market goodness all the time. So that's helpful. 